Sas, dale gas. What up? Welcome back. We are back, man. I'm so refreshed. I'm ready to go. This is RPT, Red Pill Tamales, season number five, episode dos. And it is Cinco de Mayo, brother. It is. Cinco de motherfucking Mayo. Man, we'll talk about some memories once we get into the show. Chingo de Mayo. Yeah, memories. man. Put it forward, believe it. Um, I am Chingo Bling. Remember, do not take any medical advice from me. Don't take any, um, you know, just take the shit with a grain of salt. You know, look at me like a little paisa Joe Rogan. Because uh, I posted something about what, what's going on in Colombia. And somebody was like, you see, posting stuff like this, you, you part of the problem. And I'm like, hmm, I'm, I'm part of the problem. Anyway, I'm a stand-up comedian. I am on tour. Freedom of Speech tour. Uh, we're headed to Corpus Christi, May 20th through the 22nd. I might go uh, deep sea fishing while I'm out there. Ooh. Ontario, California, July 14th. Oxnard, California, July 15th. Irvine, California, August 11th. Denver, Colorado, August 27th through the 29th. Brea, California, September 15th. Then we have Houston in September. Addison, Texas in October. San Antonio in October. Get your tickets now at chingobling.com. Sass. What if I were to believe it? I got my taxes done. I'm energized. <laughs> I see that. So I'm ready to go. Apologies, because uh, RPT public episodes go up Wednesday morning. This will be up Wednesday afternoon. Yeah, like it's I guess. Yeah, it was just busy day for yesterday. So no, no big deal. It's still coming out on the same day, just a little bit later. So everybody relax. Yeah, like I guess. <laughs> we were getting our taxes done, y'all. So. And it takes a hot minute, man. Business taxes are never fun. Yeah. But it is single the mile, and I was getting all the uh, two years ago today, you know, you know, all oh, my memories, uh -huh. on my camera roll, and on Facebook and Instagram and shit. That was one hell of a party. Yeah. And a lot of people listening to this, like this show has grown exponentially since we started it, obviously. Mm -hmm. So if they have no idea, you want to fill them in real quick on what that, how we made that happen? What Chingo de Mayo was? Yeah, what it was and are we doing it again? Mm -hmm. Is it Not happening? this year. <laughs> well, obviously not this year. Yeah. So basically Chingo de Mayo is um, two years ago for the first time we put together like a, uh, a really cool experience for the fans. The goal was to just hang out have DJs, bands, performers, artists, rappers, a um, uh, couple vendors, food trucks, the Paleta guy on his bike. Um, With bags on it, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I was, I was looking forward to performing this year. I wanted to actually, you know, dust off the old hat and, and, uh, and do some rapping and stuff. But um, El Pinche Virus mm. uh, fucked over 2020, so that didn't happen. And, uh, and also, we want to do it right. And uh, we didn't want to rush this year, so we said, you know what, let's just skip this year, ni modo. It is yeah. what it is. We already have a lot on our plate, and we don't want to half-ass chingo de mayo. All right. But, uh, but yeah, hopefully next year it'll be um, whoever, whoever I'm not canceled by, whoever <laughs> still has my back, and uh, they still like craft beer and, and stuff like that. Hey, so why are you so refreshed, man? A serious question. Why, why am I so energetic? Yeah. Man, Shell Shock CBD. 10% <laughs> off, promo code CHINGO. Um, I took the one with melatonin last night. Yeah. So when you get to be my age, recovery is a big deal. Like, um, my wife had a pop up. When Sunday? Was that was Saturday, Sunday. It was Sunday. Sunday. That's why we missed church. Yeah. So, um, me solie. It was, it was super hot out there. Uh, great turnout. Uh, can't complain, but I got a, a little extra bit of sun. So I, I just felt drained, man. We it kicked our butt, and then the next day I had a training session with uh, the trainer Sean, and um, I, I was taking like two, three minute breaks in between stuff, and I'm just sitting there thinking about my life, sweating, <laughs> trying to catch my breath. Just I felt toxins. Like what is all this? Is this too much caffeine? What's going on? Mm. But uh, but today we just had a training session, and uh, I'm back. So I was able to make it through, and. Uh, you know, got some good rest. All so, right. You yeah. bounce back. Yeah, I saw you posted that uh, Delta 8. I still haven't tried any of that stuff, but people rave about the Delta 8 strain of gummies mm -hmm. and shit that you can take. I guess it's like legal THC. That's what I for, hear. Because it's hemp derived. All of the benefits of getting high off regular flour minus the paranoia. Is yeah, well, well, we're not. F well, I guess you could call it flour, but it's, it's an edible. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm saying you can get actual <clears throat> flour, though. Mm. I've heard people at some of these uh, smoke shops Actually, will yeah, sell it behind I, the counter. I have heard about that. Yeah. Uh, cause uh, my boy Donkey Boy, he just released something with Urban Flower, and um, I think they got Delta Eight. But you will fail a piss test. So uh. again, I'm just a comedian. <laughs> Do not take uh, legal advice from me. Um, political advice, you could take that shit with a big ass grain of salt. However, we do aim to be as objective as possible, even though we're human and we're a little biased. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Where do we start, man? Where do we R start? The racist teacher. She was a professor uh, at I think uh, UCLA or something. <clears throat> 
uh, I think it was because it was Los. No, it wasn't Los Angeles. What yeah, was it? I think it, it was, was in LA. Okay. Yeah. So there was a viral video. Uh, this woman was getting pulled over by a uh, uh, raza policia way Mexican American police. He had an accent, and everything. Lower your window, ma'am. <laughs> and uh, this lady just went off on his ass. Uh, uh, first of all, I'm filming you because you're racist and you're a murderer. You're a murderer. She called him a murderer. I don't know how many times. He's like, ma'am. I'm just pulling you over, yeah. and you can't be on your phone while you're driving. Oh, 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 you going to give me a cell phone ticket? Well, I pulled it out because I was filming you. We posted it on what did he say twice by mistake yeah. because I think Rob had already posted it. Yeah. And um, it, it's gone viral. And I guess the angle that a lot of conservatives, you know, conservatives begin triggered. You know, we flake. We snowflakes. You know, um, uh, 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 people on the right or whatever, you non-Democrat people, right? Right. We get triggered real easy. So the way a lot of conservatives interpreted this video is this is a further example how the, the media has pushed this dangerous narrative. They disrespecting the police. We need to tighten up around the police. And these people just talking crazy to this minority cop. He's a Mexican-American cop. Woman, he's just pulling you over. And you already acting a fool, calling him a, a murderer, a racist. And then she said, um, you'll never be white. You you always gonna be Mexican. That was the kicker, dude. That's and what remember that's what, that. every, that's what triggered everybody. And you ain't never gonna be white. He's like, what? He's like, bitch, I don't want to be white. He's like, you're black. Why are you telling me that? I, I, they had her face blurred. I really couldn't tell. You could see it because they blurred most of it at the second part of the video, but at the beginning, you could tell she was a black lady. Which whatever. It's it's so weird that you have to preface these stories by like he was brown, she was mm -hmm. black, because it's gonna be such a racial thing. And that's on top the world, of it, that's the world we live in. It is, man. That body cam was his personal body cam. Did you know that? Oh, he that department doesn't provide him, and he went out and purchased his own just to protect his job. And apparently, he's had to use it multiple times wow. because people will just make shit up. Man, that's another hazard of being a police officer. I guess it's a small precinct too, so they don't have them yet. I'm like, yeah. who doesn't in a world well, like this? And guess what, bro? And they want to defund the yeah. police. So I remember I saw a video of police in was it Guatemala or Honduras or something. Well, it was a, obviously a more extreme situation where they all had to share one bulletproof vest. Oh, only yeah, one yeah, of them, yeah. only one of them had like a, a decent sized gun, like yeah. a little rifle. The they had two cop cars. One has been waiting to get repaired. It, it had already been shot up. <clears throat> but anyway, the fact that this officer had to go buy his own body cam that lets you know that another hazard of being a police officer is you might get accused of some shit. Yeah. If, if he didn't have that cam. It was going to be like her footage against his. She probably could have find a way to have it edited, turn it into, it, it turns into a media thing. Well, apparently she, you know how like, uh, I won't give me a badge number and file a complaint. She had filed like, let's say a dozen complaints on cops. Mm. So if you don't have a body cam or you don't have any way, it's your word versus her word. And if, if the media gets wind of it <clears throat> and then they go look up this officer and he's like, well, he has a, he has a dozen formal complaints. It could just be anything and it's, com it's considered a complaint. Yeah. Like I could do a complaint right now. Exactly. And then the media's like, well, this uh, corrupt officer has a dozen complaints. We should probably get him off the force. Man. Like, so, and she had a child in the back seat. That was real shitty. And she was a teacher. I think she was a professor somewhere. Um, but it's almost like, man, you're giving teachers a bad rep because yeah. as it is, a lot of conservatives feel like a lot of these teachers are just Marxist, neo Marxist, leftist. They pushing um, wokeness on these kids right. and they're indoctrinating the youth you know what i'm saying like that uh, motherfucking hunter biden he's teaching f a course on fake news at tulane in louisiana these kids are paying like 70 g's to go to this school and you got punk ass crackhead ass hunter biden talking about some fake news bruh is my mother's way hey did you hear we're, we're like all over the place but did you hear that biden might make uh mary garcetti uh the ambassador for india <sighs> What the fuck? Yeah, I saw uh, Informed with Anthony posted that, and, and he said uh, he said uh, I guess that's going to leave the mayoral position open. Open, right? It, let's we'll get back to California. It's going to get really interesting with this recall and maybe this Garcetti thing. But mm -hmm. uh, speaking of Informed with Anthony, he talked about that teacher where uh, up until today was listed as part of the of the faculty at at that at at a uh, was it UCLA or something like that? West College. It says West oh, LA College. Okay, as an ESL teacher. Hmm. Imagine and, that. She's working with a bunch she, of brown kids, probably. And she's telling the cop, you ain't never going to be white. You a murderer and you racist. So he had this screenshot of the online directory for that school mm -hmm. who that listed her as a employee. 
And then the school came back and said that she hadn't been employed since 2017. Mm. Which is okay. very... But he has a screenshot from yesterday that has her name on it. And the, she the day before. And then yesterday it was gone. Uh. So they're just trying to sweep... It's, it seems like they're trying to sweep it under the rug. Yeah. <clears throat> Fucking fuckery, man. You know, it's just crazy times. And everything's so polarizing. Anything dealing with police encounters and... Um, I just be feeling bad for these cops, man, because it's already dangerous. I, I know some people are like, pinche chingo bling bootlicker. These, these <clears throat> police are Gestapo and they're, you know, they're uh, 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 indigenous people on stolen land have been marginalized. And these are uh, uh, agents of, of hatred. And what about little Adam Toledo? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, everything dealing with police has gotten so politicized. We saw leading up to the 2020 election. The Democrats and Biden, they were, I guess, kind of on some defund the police thing. And, and they were letting Antifa burn and loot and, and mayhem. And uh, so it, it just looked real weird. And I remember, I think Biden had said, like, man, they're kicking our ass with that defund the police thing. Like, he, he wanted to back off from it or something. Yeah. And then he had the Zoom call with the uh, black leaders. And he was like, y'all need to get with the Hispanics. It's about to be way more Hispanics than y'all. And yeah, it's funny because that one's going like viral again, again or it's like it's circulating. Like people didn't know about it. Like when did he say this? It's like this is like two months ago. How did they not know that? Right. It yeah. was like right. It was right when he got in. Inaugurated, right? yeah. Shortly after. Uh, go Come back on, to man. That. Come on, man. When people type it, I like how they like they extend the ends. Like, Come, Come on, man. man. Uh, we got to have that little drop. I know. It. I was just looking Come at the on, fucking man. thing. I got to load a bunch of them up there. But uh, w- talking about cops. I have a bunch of friends that are like state troopers and sheriffs and regular patrol cops. And they had a thing in Austin. Like one moved from Houston to like the Round Rockish area. Mm-hmm. And they had a big uh, parade and march and stuff for, I think it was like fallen officers or whatever. And in my head, just as a regular civilian, I'm like, I wonder how they feel about having big, you know, displays like this right now where a maniac could just re- like start driving through this, you know, parade of cops. Well, like, uh, is it Round Rock, you said? Yeah, it's just outside of Austin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And... It's just like, that's where my thoughts go sometimes because of how fucking insane things are right now. Not only that, bro, the cartels are already putting C4 on little drones. Drones! And they flying them bitches on a competition. Like, bitch, we the only ones moving dope through here. Buys mocos, dude. Come wild. So, that means the townspeople, shit, they're going to start strapping C4 to a, a, a drone and they're going to drop it on the cartel that have been terrorizing these communities. Well, since we're talking about Jesus Christ... <clears throat> My bad. Uh, since we're talking about cartel, what is going on in South America? Oh, I've been man. seeing the Colombia stuff, and I've been seeing the president of El Salvador mm-hmm. and the Supreme Court and the whole congressional thing going on down there. Mm-hmm. Do you have an idea? I know very little. So I, I would say I know a little bit more about the Colombia thing. The El Salvador thing, I know very, very, very little. I, I heard basically like, I don't know much about El Salvador's constitution or how their separation of powers and all that, mm-hmm. but it seems that... This millennial president that they have who didn't campaign to win. He campaigned. All on social media. All on social media. Kind of like who? (laughs) Who else didn't campaign? uh, Who else was in the basement? (laughs) Are you seeing parallels here, bro? Yeah. And that's what I'm I'm not sure about because as I started, and I just started reading about it like on Tuesday or Monday, people were saying that no, like people are in favor of removing the Supreme Court justices and re completely revamping their justice in El Salvador. In El Salvador because it's uh it's completely doing away with all the corruption and starting from scratch. And I'm like, okay, that kind of that if you frame it that way, that makes some sense, right? If there's a ton of corruption in one of, in, the, in the in the place where there's more the most murders in the entire world. But then you keep reading other people are like, no, this guy's just turning into a dictator. Mm -hmm. And I think we kind of fell for the okie doke kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, okay, we need to do some research there. Hmm. Well, they say power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we will pray for the people of El Salvador and we will pray for that president. And hopefully he does the right thing and doesn't abuse, um, you know, the power. Yeah, his newly acquired power. Yeah, because... What we're seeing is that, in, obviously in Latin America, it has, it has a history. Um, there's, you know, people love to bring up st- economic hitman type stuff. Like, what about the, um, the big fruit companies that will go down there and, and exploit the natural resources of some of these countries? You know, they'll go, you know, a dole, like dole pineapples or bananas or something. They'll go and, and do a, 
I guess, give the people a raw deal where they'll 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 cut a deal with a corrupt politician. They'll say, hey, we're going to help build y'all some infrastructure in exchange. You know, we're going to give y'all this big loan in exchange. Y'all just going to have to pay us back with interest, blah, blah, blah. And they end up fucking owning the country. So one thing that happens is the more natural resources a country has, the more corruption it ends up having. So obviously Mexico, you know, Africa, you got all kind of petroleum, diamonds, natural resources, minerals. They, they you know, everybody from De Beers, uh, the diamond people, um, everybody named mom wants to come in and exploit your country. That's why Japan, who doesn't have a lot of natural resources, doesn't have a lot of corruption. Yeah. Um, it's like a gift and a curse. So, Colombia, I... I saw a post and I kind of read the, the lady's caption. She's obviously like, I guess, conservative or on the right. And the way she framed it was basically like you got these leftist anarchists that are raising hell, um, you know, bringing chaos, destruction. Um, this uh, this uh, president, he raised the taxes on on the people like a really weird economic approach and people weren't having it. It's like, bitch, we're already we're already hurting f- to begin with, and it's a fucking pandemic, and now you taxing the shit out of us. And just people took to the streets in droves, and things got violent. Um, they end up using excessive force on the protesters, like they end up fucking capping a couple motherfuckers. Obviously, a lot of um of the police got hurt too, so they were in emergency rooms as well, a handful, I'm sure. But um, so I went through YouTube. And just looked at like, I did a search for Columbia and looked up like random, obviously it's different sources like Reuters and mm-hmm. you obviously have to kind of take everything with a grain of salt. So some people frame it as he's a right wing president and when poor people are fed up and they've had enough and they take to the streets and, you know, and that's why the person that I reposted, the way she was framing it was... You know, you got these George Soros funded motherfuckers. You got indigenous people that have been marginalized for 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 generations. And it's just almost like a little Petri dish of. I mean, shit, Chile. I mean, it's happening all over the fucking place. So it's fascinating. It's interesting. If you guys have any information, I know everybody in the TIA, they be up on game. Um, My wife, the lady that does her eyelashes is Colombian. And she was mentioning it to my wife. She's like, girl, you don't know what's going on in Colombia? And, you know, she's like, my parents are down there and they're in the countryside. So they're still good. They still have access to food. The supply chain hasn't broken completely. Mm-hmm. Um, the anarchists haven't made it to the rural parts. And my wife's like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. And um, I think she's, she told her like, oh, yeah, my husband posted something about it. And she's like, dang, I didn't know Chingo Bling was woke <laughs> like that. you know, Or not woke. Let's not use that word. Like, <laughs> I told you, man. Fuck that yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, you know, based or whatever. Like, I know Chingo Bling was speaking up about what's going on in Colombia. And now here's the doozy, Rob. Okay. The doozy is I'm not an expert on Colombian politics, p- Colombian affairs. I'm not Colombian. I don't live in Colombia. I'm, I'm an outsider looking from the outside in. I posted the, the I reposted from that lady, uh, Vero Colombia, and you know people in the comments like, "Yup, we're next. Yup, that's these socialists. Mm. Yup, I hope these leftists are paying attention. Yup, they got Antifa over there too. Yup, George Soros, and and this is global." And then a couple people were like, "You don't even know what's going on." And I'm like, "Yeah, I know. I've already told plenty of people in the comments." I honestly don't know much about this. I'm just spreading the word. Really, what happened was. I meant to post it to the What Did He Said page, <laughs> and it accidentally went to the Real Chingo Bling page. Oops. But still, it's almost like if you're if you're a, a comedian, you're a podcaster, and you openly acknowledge that you're not an expert on a subject, like you're asking for help. Yeah. Can somebody please fact check, debunk, add some context? How else is it being framed? What's the propaganda saying down there? Um, there's a musician down there. He said he's going to give us some more info because he's he's in Colombia. He's from Colombia. Mm. He lives there, born and raised, everything. But cut people some slack. Like, you know, it's almost like saying, like, Joe Rogan shouldn't talk about nothing unless he's done a super deep dive and he's got a master's degree in that subject. It's like, okay, there's not going to be no Andrew Schultz. There's not going to be no Theo Vaughn. There's not going to be no commentary. Tim Dillon. Yeah, it, it won't be no commentary. It won't be no Chingo Bling and Rob on here 
having a discussion. Yeah, it's just like the people that say... Uh, they told me you're part of the problem. <laughs> now, how the fuck I'm part of the problem, bitch? What does that even mean? I'm not the one driving tanks, shooting at people. What, what about the people, because it, it reminds me of those that say, uh, where were you during under Trump or Obama yeah. or Bush, you know, about immigration, for instance? Where were you? It's like, where was I? Like, what does it matter? I'm here now. I'm trying to bring attention to it. I'm trying to find it's out like, more about Bush. it. Bush. I'm trying to, yeah, interview people about it. Like, I'm putting the, inf- the effort to learn, to share info. What the fuck else do you want? And entertain. Yeah, and I'm not, because you brought up Bush and stuff like that. Ain't nobody on here saying... Our Republicans are angels and our Republicans are patriots and our Republicans care about the country. Obviously not. You got bullshit ass Democrats and you got some bullshit ass Republicans that need to get the fuck out the way. Yeah. And they're not really bringing no change. I saw um, when, when, when you recommended The Swamp, there was that, that one little piece of the documentary where um, Matt Gates and the other guy, uh, Ro, Ro, oh, Ro Khanna. Yeah, Ro Khanna, the Democrat from Cali. Um, they were saying like you have... Was it like the establishment and then reformers, like mm-hmm. people that people that don't want change, they just want to keep trucking along in the traditional manner, like oh, I'm a Republican, keep the they, status they quo, wear the suit and the tie, and their messaging is bad. They can't attract people like me, and then it takes somebody like Donald Trump to come out and make it shit about America first, make it about the people, call out the swamp, call out the fake news, bring back jobs, and um, and really, a, a lot of people argue Trump saved. The Democratic, I mean, yeah. the uh, GOP. Yeah, yeah. So, like I said, Rob, and I speak for Rob, because I'm, I'm, I know you don't also defend every single little thing Trump has ever done or said. No. That's how people interpret this shit sometimes. And it, it, again, we always call it the, or I call it the, the common sense show as well. We're just trying to bring things up that make sense. A lot of things that don't make sense, we're going to shit on it because it doesn't make sense to us. That's just natural, right? That's human instinct. And it's funny because Rogan will say a lot of things that make sense that you won't hear from a Fauci or a whoever the fuck, right? Who's supposed to be the expert. Yeah, ain't it crazy, bro, that we're living in a time... And in a world where a fucking, like he self-describes, like a meathead, MMA commentator, commentator, fucking stand-up comedian has more credibility than a lot of these established establishments, um, you know, networks and talking heads and shit. Like the video I sent you, what's her name? Sunny from uh, The View, Sunny Liston or whatever. Mm. When she was on there, and I, I, I digress, but she was on there talking about we need to start shunning people who are hesitating to get the vaccine. Um, your fear of the vaccine is is now impeding on the uh, the health and freedoms and rights of us that that did choose. And and she says, you know how businesses in New York say, uh, uh, don't come in if you don't have a mask. Well, you you need to not come in if you're not vaccinated. You need to be ready to show proof. And blah 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 blah. And I'm thinking, okay. Who is paying this woman to say this? And why is it so on script? Or is she, or is she like this much of a vax pusher, left narrative? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we need to start shunning those. And you know what I mean? It's like, damn, just further separate people. Uh, uh, like, we need to put them on a train. You know, damn near, uh, right? Like, uh, I don't think we got to talk to or got to talk about, was it Joan Rivers? Not Joan Rivers. What the fuck? Uh, Behar. Okay, what's she doing? On The View, what's where she, she was talking about, uh, what's her face? Tim, uh, or his, well, his face. Tim Scott? Yeah. Well, I did, yeah, I didn't watch the Tim Scott one, but it was the, the Jenner one, where she kept calling, like, she kept calling, she kept calling her a him over and over again, mm. and then later on just said, uh, I'm sorry, I guess I didn't get a lot of sleep, I didn't mean to uh, mis, uh, misappropriate or whatever, and just like, that was it, you know, but had anybody on the other side said that, it would have been the end of that person's career. She, she apologized later that episode? Yeah. Because you could yeah, tell they got in her earpiece. Exactly, you They're could like, see it because she's in the middle of an exchange with whoever the person she was talking to on you know the camera, and she was like, in the middle of the thing, she's like, "What? Oh!" And then later when she gets her opening, she's like, mm. uh, "Apologize for what I said." They do that all the time. When when we used to watch that punk ass show, fuck the View, <laughs> and, and 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 fuck 2018 version of Chingo Bling. They, <laughs> they used to watch the View, and used to enjoy it with his wife, and was a big fan of Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> I mean, it was just like current events. But check this out, bro. Think about the 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 day and age that we're living in, bro. Where you're having to you're having to sift through information pertaining to your health 
and your livelihood and your business and your state and, and in terms of what's safe? Do I have to wear three masks outside in the sun by myself riding a bike? Or do I, you know what I'm saying? What's up with this herd immunity thing? Uh, is it my duty as a patriot and American to go get immunized so that, you know, I can help help the rest and then we can be through this quicker or whatever? Like, we're living in these times when there's pandemics and vaccines and, and all this uh, anti-police rhetoric. And then you have these shows like The View. Mm -hmm. So basically the point I'm trying to make is when my wife and I would sit there and watch it like 2017 or something. Not as much was at stake. You see what I'm saying? Like they could have just said some stuff like, oh, uh, today uh, this happened. And, and it's like, oh, OK, whatever. And going about our day. Now, if you watch those shows, it can really shape what you're doing um, you know, your personal life with your body, you know, are you comfortable going to work? Are you wearing three masks outside by yourself? And shit like that. Uh, and that reminded me to go back to California real quick because we're talking about Garcetti and Newsom's recall and whatever. And the and then Jenner, um, it's it's Caitlyn, right? Jenner, yeah, uh -huh, Caitlyn Jenner, uh -huh. putting her name in the hat to be uh, governor. If if any Republican won, L or California is so blue that. They wouldn't have any power because they, they run like it's all it's a super majority. So they would just veto. You would have a if you, if you had a Republican, you'd have a lame duck Republican where they did absolutely nothing. So it's almost like, can you have somebody like a I don't know a whole lot about Rokana, but anybody that was like a little more reasonable, they could maybe bring the two parties together. Otherwise, it's like you're going to have another another Garcetti replace him and another Newsom replace him. Mm. We're going to pray for the people of California. Yeah. We're going to pray for their taxes. Uh, they're trying to tax these people into the poorhouse. Yeah. I mean, we're, all, we're already getting hit from so many different angles. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of... I know my 2020, my 2020 took a big old hit. Mm. I hadn't really done a whole bunch of calculations and shit. Yeah. But when we sat there in the tax office... I was like, "Is that number correct? That's for <laughs> what? What is that? That's for, yeah. That's for twenty. That's for twenty twenty. That's for, you okay. sure that's not 02? Man, I, pff, <laughs> I probably made more in O two. <laughs> shit, I, I think I bought a house in O two. Yeah. I was like twenty twenty two, twenty three, and shit. Um, so California, we we will pray that the people of California really, really, I mean, really demand the changes that they want. And hopefully, we're just gonna pray that um, they get some good options and and get some good relief, right? whatever that is. If if it's the homelessness problem, the crime, um, I guess RPT needs some more listeners out there so that people can kind of have a more nuanced view. Yeah. And, and and I'm I'm really curious how many folks in California feel that their Democratic leaders are doing a good job. Not many, because we have a lot to listen to. I was actually going to bring up one, Naranja Dulce, who's also a patron. Shout out. She's on the Patreon. You can sign up at patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. Sent me an interesting little clip about uh, just California in general, where they're talking about... Uh, so for those asking, the state of California is planning to extend COVID-19 emergency declaration until at least the end of 2021. The COVID-19 COVID emergency declaration. What does all that mean? Basically gives Newsom... Uh, power like he, he can still make all the executive orders that he wants as far as like because they're supposed to open up 100 percent. i think next month in june mm. but you know if certain things were met certain, certain metrics. yeah exactly if certain metrics were met uh that, and that kind of just sums it all up i wonder if the people of california be seeing like man mississippi's open florida's wide open texas ain't got wear masks and so on and so forth like people getting back to work in all these different states florida's open 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 executive order uh governor de santis passed the executive order he said what do he say basically <laughs> basically that uh his uh his order supersedes all of the other mayoral orders so fuck all your restrictions in your towns or cities no more uh, basically punishing citizens that don't want to do whatever your local uh, does that mean, are. Does that mean that a grocery store can't do that? Can't, can't demand? Out, can't do none of that. Yeah. Can't, they can't say, sir, you have to put no. your mask on. No. No shit. Boy, what's up, Governor Abbott? Yeah, man, for real, because I had a run in, I forgot to tell you last week, at Xfinity. Whoa. Oh, wow. bro. I told him I saw on, on Her Lounge. Go sign up for that or uh, listen to that if you want to. Her Lounge podcast. Yes. Um, 
Don was like, hey, go return this Xfinity box. All you got to do is walk in and put it inside the box to your right. That's all. You don't have to talk to nobody. And then when I went six months ago, they made a big hubbub about the fucking mask. I put it on because I had one on me. I don't have one on me anymore because nowhere that I go ever makes me put one on. I was like, I really don't want to. And I'd asked her to return it twice and she kept forgetting it. And when I was walking out the door, she's like, oh, I put it right there on the counter so you could take it. And I was like, all right. I drop it off. It's my last errand to run last Thursday or, or Wednesday or whatever. And uh, I walk in and the guy is sitting there next to the box that I was supposed to drop it in. And he's like, oh, I got to scan it. I was like, okay. He takes it, starts scanning it. <clears throat> he's like, hey, do you have a mask? I was like, no, I don't. He's like, oh, I can't process this if you don't have a mask on. I was like, I don't have one. He's like, can you wait outside? And I was like, and it was, this isn't a reason why specifically, but it was windy as fuck. It was like 15 mile an hour winds for whatever random reason. I was like, I really don't want to wait outside, man. It won't take that long. His manager walks over and says, sir, can you? I was like, I don't have one. Officer! 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 Across the Xfinity store. To, he, for a cop? A cop. A real cop. A real Sugar Land PD. He walks over, he's holding his vest, and I was like, I was like, sir, I know you don't really want to do this. Uh, he was like, he didn't, the, the cop didn't say a word. The manager kept saying, I'm going to need you to wait outside, sir. I was like, this interaction is taking longer than him giving me the receipt for that box. <sighs> so they both didn't say a word. They just kept looking at me. So I stepped outside, blood boiling. You should have coughed on the muff. <laughs> blood boiling. <laughs> Bitch, welcome to COVID. I walked outside, <laughs> and literally, I walk out, and the manager's walking back to the door with my receipt. He basically, he just had to hit print. <sighs> I was like, I was like, he's like, have a great day. I was like, bye, loser. It's just power tripping. People just love to power trip when they have that type of authority. And that's the problem with a lot of these states. And you have narratives and, and, and media and propaganda and fear porn all on the TV and CNN getting caught on tape talking about, yeah, we love showing how many cases and numbers and yeah, fuck yeah. And if they're not afraid of this anymore, we're about to scare y'all about climate change. <laughs> and that's the world we're living in. And uh, I mean... I get it. Some people trying to just do their job. And this is how my mind thinks. My mind is, okay, where's Xfinity based out of? Right. Number one. And then two, what's their um, business, what's the hierarchy or structure to where somebody has to come up with protocol for like, all right, hey, so our Houston based stores, um, you know, it's different over there. So what are we doing? Not across the board. Okay. So basically masks all the time even if they're just coming in for 20 seconds to return the thing yes uh, uh, uh okay and, and and it's like it's like is there a zoom call conference call where somebody's like um i'm just i just want to let you know i'm i'm from the uh i run the i manage this the region the, the region right i'm just letting you know that um we're gonna get a lot of pushback from these communities especially if it's like outskirt rural um in general less urban areas whatever we're just gonna get a lot of pushback in the state of texas i'm just letting y'all know higher ups at xfinity <laughs> that um you know are, do we have officers there um at what point do we give in if somebody with a beard gets belligerent <laughs> and, and looks at our cop and says, you don't want to do this, man. This ain't what you want. This ain't what you want, playboy. I did say, I also wanted to say, just jokingly being like, you make it hard to want to back the blue. <laughs> but, I but I didn't. I was like, but I didn't. I didn't. I you should have called him a racist and a murderer. Oh, and tell him right. you'll never be white. He was, also, he was Mexican too. Oh, you'll never be white. Yeah. That's Damn. what people be telling me, man. Like, like somebody said, um, yeah, but y y we can't forget where we came from. And I'm like, so we got to vote Democrat in order to remember where we came from? <laughs> That's so dumb. And then, bro, I posted the story about the, um, I think it's like four different Latinas in the RGV, oh, South yeah. Texas, that were like running for, I believe, I believe most of them are running for Congress. I'm not sure, but like public office, government type stuff. And the 1,500 comments back and forth polarized uh somebody was like gross i just threw up in my mouth and and i'm like you're salty over some mexican-american women trying to bring change to their community because the rgv has had some of the poorest counties in the nation um it's been blue forever a lot of corruption shit ton of corruption there's even a dude down there a democrat who won like the highest honor award from Guatemala. And it just so happens that it's a lot of Guatemalans coming through there, through uh through that area, Mission, Texas or whatever. Um, so there's a lot of like stuff like, oh, and that same cat, I can get you the name and all that. Mm. That same dude magically somehow had an account in China 
and like i think 200 grand got dropped in there what yeah so a public official yeah in wow. south texas democrat and he won the highest uh, uh award in uh in guatemala like this big honor like some shit that they gave like martin Luther King, like some big crazy shit and it's like he's just a little guy from the valley why does he have such a big award in guatemala why is he so cool with the leaders of guatemala and why he got a chinese bank account with some money in it uh, i believe there's some of that in the clip i sent you from uh, all reasonable questions by the way yeah so so i posted the the thing about the latinas running and man so many people were like Oh my God, they're so fucking brainwashed. Or look at these trumpety, trumpanzi, <laughs> trumpers. And uh, and I'm like, that's how y'all interpreted it. That's how y'all took it. Yeah. Like, why y'all even follow me? Like, man, I, yeah. I don't want this many followers. <laughs> I really don't even want to be on Facebook. Like, just unfollow me. But just, no, they won't. They love and, it. And I told motherfuckers on there, I said, if these facts, I think it was on a different post. It was about the uh, the border crisis. I was like, if these facts hurt your feelings... Just unfollow me and go follow George Lopez and yeah. you'll just be way happier in your life because I'm going to keep bringing attention to this shit. And, uh, and they won't unfollow me. No. They, no, they, they want to be tortured. They want to get blocked, I guess. Yeah, there's something about that. It's almost like they want the satisfaction like, oh, I got him to block me. I finally got to him. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right. And that's, that's, and that's cool too. Yeah. Like, if that's going to be our connection <laughs> to where... On the block list. Yeah, to where, like the same way... I'm able to say America Ferreira blocked me. Right, right. You know, it's like that's that anecdote. Think about it, man. That might be our, there might be a whole community of people Chingo Bling has blocked. Oh, for sure there is. And, may, and they'll always have that, that recuerdo and shit. You know what I'm saying? That's always going to be the thing where it's like at a party, like, so what's up, man? Do you know the groom or the bride? Nah, man. Yeah, I, I know the groom. Yeah. So, oh, where are you from? What do you do? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, man, one time Chingo Bling blocked me. <laughs> He's like, well, me too. Yeah. Fuck, dude. Hey, babe. Yeah. I wanted to bring up uh, this guy that we talked about on, a, I think we talked about it on the Patreon episode. Um, I think his name is George Saki. The guy I told you was on Star Trek. Mm -hmm. He's a super, like, all of a sudden has a Takai, super left. Takai, something like something, that? Something, yeah, I, I don't know. Some Star Trek Asian character from the mm -hmm. original Star mm -hmm. Trek. And it was like him giving uh, Caitlyn Jenner all this praise, you know? Yeah. And then the next slide was from this year. He's like, I don't know who gives her any time, blah, blah, blah. It's like, because she says she's going to run oh, as a Republican. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's, it's so funny. There's a lot of those where, where they look at the old posts where it's like Caitlyn Jenner is a hero is a yes, hero yes. because she blah 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 right because it was all the transgender yep, stuff yep. she's a female she's she's she deserves all these awards and then you fast forward when she's running for governor republican uh, republican governor of cali it, it turns into we don't talk enough about how caitlin ran over someone yes that was the one <laughs> killed a guy but also in that same clip or in that same meme it was a uh, or no, it was because of the video. I think it was TMZ that asked about the trans sports thing. Uh, and she was like, did you see that one? She said, it's not fair. It's not fair. It's yeah, common bio sense. Biologically boys. You know, bio Bruh. Biological boys playing against girls. Who does that sound like? Um, Silence of the Lambs or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We need to do some Clarice, voiceovers. Clarice. Clarice. We need to do some voiceovers. Come on. Come on with it. So what is this Jason Bourne thing? Oh yeah, mm, yes. <laughs> our 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 actual notes for the day. Mm -hmm. um, so him and Senator Cruz were trending, or not him, but the name was trending because of Senator Cruz, and it was because of. And you actually sent you ended up sending it to me like an hour later. It was the CIA video. Did you watch oh, it? Oh man, the super inclusive, whatever the fuck it was. Are you gonna play it? I'll look. Yeah, I'll look for it. Oh hey, baby bladder making a baby bladder making a, a presence. It's been like three episodes since he's had to. It was fresh water of, of Jamaica. Um, as you guys look at an empty chair, that's what I've been sipping on here. Marisol made some fresh agua de Jamaica. Jamaica. But um, yeah. So Senator Cruz tweeted something out to the effect of, and I'll find it right now. Meanwhile, Chingo does uh, does what he's got to do. As you guys know, the internet's not the fastest back here. Senator Cruz tweeted. It's buffering, everybody. If you're Chinese, if you're a Chinese communist, Iranian, uh, Mullah, or Kim Jong-un, would this scare you? And it's the video of the CIA. <laughs> Which, what a funny, what a funny thing to, to tweet. 
and then I think he was he was he tweeted something else to the effect of like uh we're, we've come a long way from Jason Bourne and that's why it started to trend and then people were just like you do realize that that's not that's a fictional character right it's like you guys don't get what I was trying to say here obviously <laughs> they but, missed the whole point yeah. When I was 17, I quoted Zora Neale Hurston's How It Feels to Be Colored Me in my college application essay. The line that spoke to me stated simply, I am not tragically colored. There is no sorrow damned up in my soul nor lurking behind my eyes. I do not mind at all. At 17, I had no idea what life would bring, but Zora's sentiment articulated so beautifully how I felt as a daughter of immigrants then and now. Nothing about me was or is tragic. I am perfectly made. I can wax eloquent on complex legal issues in English while also belting Guayaquil de mis amores in Spanish. I can change a diaper with one hand and console a crying toddler with the other. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a woman it made me color. laugh the first time I I'm watched a mom. it. Hold on, I'm I a am woman a cisgender color. millennial who's been diagnosed with generalized anxiety <laughs> disorder. I am intersectional, but my existence is not a box checking exercise. I am a walking declaration. A woman whose inflection does not rise at the end of her sentences, suggesting that a question has been asked. I did not sneak into CIA. My employment was not and is not the result of a fluke or slip through the cracks. I earned my way in and I earned my way up the ranks of this organization. I am educated, qualified and competent. And sometimes I struggle. I struggle feeling like I could do more, be more to my two sons. And I struggle leaving the office when I feel there's so much more to do. I used to struggle with imposter syndrome, but at 36, I refuse to internalize misguided patriarchal ideas of what a woman can or should be. Oh. I am tired of feeling like I'm supposed to apologize for the space I occupy rather than intoxicate people with my effort, my brilliance. I am proud of me, full stop. My parents left everything they knew and loved to expose me to opportunities they never had. Because of them, I stand here today a proud first-generation Latina and officer at CIA. I am unapologetically me. I want you to be unapologetically you, whoever you are. Know your worth. Command your space. Okay. Wow. All right, so there's two ways to look at this. <clears throat> Hit it. All right, so to try and, try and give them the benefit of the doubt, Maybe they noticed they had a not very diverse, uh, what do you call it, uh, CIA agents or whatever. Mm -hmm. They're not like the TIA. You know, the TIA is hella diverse. But the CIA, maybe they were trying to recruit and attract more, you know, females, uh, people of color. I think that's the word they call us now, right? Sure. POCs and shit. WOCs. All of that. So maybe in an attempt to... Say hey, if you're La if you're Latina and you're smart and you want to be uh, serve your country and join the CIA, um, here's an ad that will hopefully uh, you can see yourself and feel that you can belong. Maybe they hired an ad agency and they say, hey man, this is our goal. It's number white boys in the CIA. We need some of these women of color. We need some intersectional. Uh, what does she call herself? Cis. So she's cisgender millennial, but she's intersectional. I don't know. I don't understand. I don't want to, my, I don't my brain. Want it's like means. it's like trying to it's like trying to sort out a bowl of ramen noodle soup. It's like okay, where does the noodle end and where's the <laughs> other noodle like? But um, maybe that's what they were trying to do. I think what triggered conservatives, right? Because again, sometimes Republicans and people on the right or conservative, whatever the hell you, non woke people, yeah. Sometimes motherfuckers be snowflakes, right? Right. So there's some key words in there that, that jumped out. And that's why that clip has been going around. Uh, I think Fox News interviewed ex-Navy SEAL, the guy that, that popped a cat in uh, bin Laden's mm. face, allegedly, right? The Navy SEAL cat. And they had him on there. And he was basically saying, when I fought alongside, you know other patriots and we were a team and we went in to do a mission mm -hmm. he says i didn't look at them and think basically this is what he said he said if they were alongside me and they were on the team and they moved up the ranks and they they passed buds and they're a fucking seal he says 
I don't give a damn where they found them. They found the best of the best and the cream of the crop. I don't care if they're black, white, female, whatever. Exactly. He's like, we had a little bit of everything. He's like, just go find the best and bring them. You know, he's like, so do you see where I'm going with this, man? Like, yeah, I, it's just it's just odd, obviously, that that they wouldn't edit out some of those trigger words, because yeah. if honestly, if they had just cut out. I am intersectional, cisgendered, millennial. What, what were the other words? Uh, cisgender, intersectional, um, um, whatever it was, right? Those little woke leftist type of new age, new yeah. agey type of words. I think that's a trigger people. And if they, I, I guarantee you, bro, if they had just cut out them little bitty parts, it would have just been like, oh, it's a Hispanic girl who is in the CIA and... And seems like she likes it. And hopefully other Hispanic girls can apply. Yeah, which is cool and all, right? It, which is fine. Diversity is awesome. I think it's great. I should really preface all of our shows by saying I like the most ridiculous things to be said because I find them to be funny. So if I say outrageous shit all the time, it's because I think it's funny um, and it, inappropriate is funny. I don't really care how diverse certain things are because like people say, I just want the best pilot. I want the best soldier. I want the best CIA agent. I don't need you to be fishing for these people who are you know, brown, black, short, tall, whatever, gay, bi, none of that matters. Well, well, you know what really matters? If if they were like, hey, y'all, our intelligence agencies um, have been very biased. Um, they've, <laughs> yeah. been, they've been used against the American people. Um, if anything, what she should have said was, I love my country. Right. And I'm honest and I have integrity. Ooh. That alone would have been like, I don't give a fuck what color you are. Mm -hmm. We need more of that in our intelligence agencies. Because arguably, this is going to sound conspiracy to a lot of people. Let me get my tinfoil off the tamal. Let me, hold on, let me take this tinfoil off the tamales real quick. Let me make a hat. Arguably, many people would say that our intelligence agencies... Here, here's what, is this on YouTube? Yeah. Okay. Let's just say that... Um, the level of expertise that would be required, hypothetically speaking, sure. if if these elections weren't the cleanest, clearest in all history, then maybe somebody of that caliber may have been involved. If you feel, if you if you catch my drift, we need to start using code words. I am picking up what you are putting down for sure. You, you understand the drip. I for, do. All right, uh, everybody listening, grab a biscuit and, <laughs> and soak it up. Um, Here we have another. You, go well, ahead. Oh, okay. And just the other point is other people would argue that our intelligence agencies have infiltrated um, the fake news organizations and they're feeding them fake stories, anonymous, weird source. Uh, oh, the Hunter Biden thing. Oh, no, no, no. That's Russian disinformation. Wait till after elections. And if that's new to you, that phrase or any of the you know, tinfoil hat stuff Chingo just said, duck, duck, go it. Don't Google it. And then see if you don't find a different search result. Mm -hmm. Here's another woke uh, CIA ad that you might enjoy more. All right, Chingo? Uh -oh. And listeners. It's going to be harder to defend. All right, let's see everybody. 17, I quoted J.D. Sandyberg's The Catcher in the Sky on my junior college application. I don't remember what the line was, but it sounded smart as shit. At 17, I didn't know what the world had in store for me, mostly because I was pissed drunk 90% of the time. But J.C. Sandwichberg's wordsmithery showed me that life as a trans Mexican immigrant disabled bisexual Jewish Canadian dyslexic person of color doesn't have to suck. I am perfectly perfect. I can talk smart as and also say cool Mexican stuff too. <laughs> Fortunately for me, I'm really good and awesome and not bad and sucky like stupid white cracker honky people are. You know how those <laughs> cis genders can be with their dumb white faces? Yuck. They probably don't even know how to wear diapers or get diagnosed with bipolar factitious Munchausen disorder. I refuse to apologize for occupying the space the patriarchy says I need to be in to conform to their gender norms and hetero life standards. I am better and smart and gooder than others and cool and proud and stuff. Because I'm a trans Mexican immigrant disabled bisexual Jewish Canadian dyslexic person of color and I am also an officer in the CIA. I want you to know that if you're exactly like me, then you're special and unique too. Are you a trans Mexican immigrant disabled bisexual Jewish Canadian dyslexic and or a person of color too? Then you should know your worth and join the CIA or else you're a Nazi. Come on, do it. 
because just like JT Salad Spree once said, everyone who doesn't join the CIA is literally Hitler. Thank you. <laughs> Shout well, out, Gabe. For that was funny. That. Yeah, man. Who, who is that? Walton who? Johnson? Was that a radio show? Yeah, or? the Houston radio hosts. They've been around forever. Huh. On what, what station? Uh, shit, you, you would ask me that. They used to be the classic rock station, I believe. Are they like conservative talk? Uh, I, well, now, I mean, they don't have that radio station anymore. So I guess now they have their own show. And the handle says it's like they're on the south, I guess, south coast, southwest, south side of town. I don't know. Hmm. But they're fucking hilarious. They always had a, a really funny morning show way back in the like early 2000s, late 90s that I can remember. But I think they've been around Houston even longer. Are they on Michael Berry's level? I dude, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they've been sure, around. You sure about that? Because I can call Michael Berry. You right should now. ask. You should ask him. Like, hey, uh, what do you think about Walton Johnson? They've been around forever. I just, I, I remember the name. My brothers used to listen to him. Hmm. But uh, that was fucking hilarious. Oh, so your brother's been on game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. My older uh, half brothers are very on game. Hmm. Yeah. Well, lucky for you. <laughs> I had to wait till I was motherfucking forty years old and shit. Be like, wait a minute, <laughs> things aren't what they seem. It's like the Matrix and shit. He's also very, I mean, they're very religious too. I, I have a pretty good family. That's why I always say I'm like the black sheep of it all because I'm, I'm always like, mm, all right, let's ruffle some feathers. But it makes sense. You grow up and, you know, the political views aren't all that crazy. I'm, I'm going to drag you to church one day, Rob. I, I, we have friends. <laughs> we, I to swear we have friends that are constantly trying to do that. Hey, Second Baptist, um, you'll have a good time, brother. They got a nice coffee bar. They, got, they got a gym. They got a daycare. They got a school. Hit. They got a band. Oh, the band is off the chain, dude. I get it. I do. I honestly, their band is also awesome. My other brother plays guitar in the band for this church. Uh -huh. They're all into it. They're great. Their community is awesome. When I used to be young, when I was younger, and I would spend the night at his house. I would have. He goes because we would get along really, you would really say, well. Hey, young man, no porn in my house. <laughs> <laughs> I was more slick than that, sir. But he would say, if you want to come over, we're gonna go to church Sunday morning because I would always want to spend the night at his house, and I was like. All right. It was that fun that I would go to church with him, wake up balls early. We'd wake up at like six thirty, seven o'clock, wow. go to church. Oh, man. And then it was like after church, we'd get together with the whole church organization for lunch. And after that, we might go somewhere. So I'd spend like all day with these people. And now they're all like in their mid 40s plus, And I still see them and they're awesome people. Mm -hmm. and it's just like I never really got on that level of like, you know, just whatever it is. I don't know. What, uh, of higher. Some, well, here's what it is, Rob. Um sometimes this is this, honestly and okay. this and this is just coming from from somebody like myself <clears throat> sometimes you just reach a point where whether it's life trying to humble you uh, whether it's the universe whether it's your internal clock whether it's you're over the hill whether it's your life has evolved where, where family's more important and you have daughters you want to raise them right or you know your wife made you go you know because if i was just a single dude i mean i'd probably just be lazy like ah, i'll just watch it on youtube right. or whatever but um sometimes in a person's life you just i would just call it a, a desire or a hunger to kind of dive in more and just make it part of your life like make it more of a system uh, i guess like in terms of like um it's almost like saying I've tried managing my life on my own and now I need, now I need somebody else's help. Totally. A little bit of a system of management. But, um, but yeah, I just think it's, it just happens sometimes where you're just like, you know what? I've never really read the Bible. I kind of want to, what's it about, babe? You know what I mean? Like who, who's all in that? You yeah. Know? Who is it? Like last night I, I was sitting there and I was like, babe, did you know that? I forget what name it was. I was like, did you know Aaron was a biblical name? She's like, yes. Yeah, see, you know, I don't, I don't, you don't know about I don't. And I'm like, I mean, I knew about, you know, Gabriel and... Hey, when she replies to you like that, does it make you want to throw the Bible at her for responding that way? Because if Don was like, yeah, duh, you don't know that? Fucking throw that book right at her. <laughs> no, because I don't, I don't adhere to the uh, Western patriarchy. <laughs> and, and anyway, so, so anyway, before I forget, the, uh, the spoof mm -hmm. and, and the CIA, uh, the actual ad, I noticed that um, they both pinpointed on the patriarchy. Like when she was like, I don't hold back and apologize for the space I take up. I don't, uh, uh, I used to have imposter syndrome, but now I, you know, she said, I don't end my sentences where it sounds like a question because I'm assertive, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I believe in myself type of thing and I'm not going to let the patriarchy. And I'm like, 
damn, you sound, you sound like you want to be out there marching with some right. people. You sound like you one of them people that's like, we on stolen land and America is, America's racist. Like, I didn't hear her say, I love my country. I want to be, I want to serve. I want to help. I want to use my talents and my skills for the betterment of others. It was just like, you ain't finna tell me what to do. Right. That's a really good point that I didn't really pick up on because you're talking about a CIA agent. You know, the first thing you'd want to do is like uphold like what this country has given you if you're that proud about what you've achieved. But no, it's like none of that. Not, not, a, not a thing. And, and I will say this. I know I, again, we try to be as um, objective as possible. And I try to look at things like give people the benefit of the doubt. But my honest, honest critique is what they could have done is just shown her and cut out all the little details about I'm intersectional and this and that. I guess they put that in there to let people know if you're intersectional, which I don't even know what that means, but if you're intersectional, um, it's okay. There are other people like the CIA will still accept you. I guess maybe that's the value of leaving that in there. But if you just wanted to convince Latinas to join the CIA, there's a lot of sharp, smart Latinas that know how to investigate. They know how to figure out your phone code. Too good. They know how to figure out where the fuck you was at and mm-hmm. why, why your body language. You know, it's, they, they can interrogate you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So That's why I stick to white girls. <laughs> <laughs> so all they had to do, bro, was show that she's a Latina, but then show her doing CIA stuff. And have her saying, I love the CIA. The CIA is dope. I love working for the CIA. And be like, oh, we could tell you're Latina. Cool. Well, okay, but then maybe this, okay. Because I also didn't know what the fuck intersexuality meant. So okay. I had to look it up and I still have the tab open. Maybe this will help you reframe what you just said or help us all understand it better, okay? Okay. Because I still didn't get it. Intersexuality is the acknowledgement that everyone has their own unique experiences of discrimination and oppression. And we must consider everything and anything that can marginalize people. Gender, race, class, sexual orientation, physical ability. That's what, that's what intersexuality is. It has so, nothing to do with sexuality. So intersexuality means that... In- intersectionality, rather, sorry. Intersectionality yeah. means that... Read it one more time. Okay, the acknowledgement that everyone has their own unique experiences of discrimination and oppression. Let's start with that. It sounds neo-Marxist to me. It sounds it, like... It sounds like they also... This perpetuates differences along the lines of gender. It sounds like Lefty Larry. It's, yeah, and it's, it's not at all anything uplifting. It's all... And you said this way back at the beginning of RPT Season 1, and we talked about it a lot. Who's more oppressed? Remember? Like it's, oppressed Olympics? Exactly. That was the phrase you used. The oppressed Olympics. Uh, you know, you would say like, you know, a, a brown person is oppressed, but a gay brown person is, and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is all this is, it's just perpetuating that that entire narrative and that entire idea for people. And it doesn't really help you achieve. Like, what's the incentive if you uh, if you say that that's me and I, I'm, I'm that type of person? Why would you want to achieve more? Why would you want to really elevate your abilities to do anything? Even if it is, it isn't, you know, CIA, just as an example. I had, I learned something today. So it, it, it basically means like, I will not limit or like if Rob said, I've been hated on because my beard. Right. Right. Then, then if I'm intersectional, then I would say, absolutely, Rob, I acknowledge you and I hear you. I hear that it's possible. That someone would hate on you for your beard. Sure. Mm. Yeah, it sounds like more division. Exactly. It, it should have... I mean... Again, he, he, let, let's just look at it this way. Homegirl's a millennial. I think I'm not. I think I'm a little bit too old to be a millennial. You're an elder millennial. I'm like Generation Z or some shit, or I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> Keep going. I'm the Street Fighter generation. <laughs> I'm Ninja Turtles. I saw you were playing that last night. With Penny. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was yeah, dope. yeah. She was trying. That was she so was funny. Up. But um, I, that, I, I'm really, really curious, though. Like, what are the origins of intersectionality? Like, is it a sociology term? Like, was there a professor in the 60s? Like, what was it birthed from? Was it is it from um, some type of women's uh, rights thing? Is it feminine? Did it come from feminism? Like, it, it sounds it, neo-Marx. It, those, you know, it sounds Marxist to me. Post-mo- uh, postmodernism type of ideas, which we need to have somebody that can really break that shit down. Well, guess who? Second Baptist. Second Baptist. They'll bust out the chalkboard, bro. <laughs> real talk. A and, real chalkboard? And, yeah. I'll kick it down if it's a real chalkboard. Get a dry erase board. Well, he'll bust out hey, cha- <laughs> uh, a chalkboard, I believe, and he'll he'll say, um, 
postmodernism. Ta, 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 ta. And this is at church. And then he'll say, um, then you got neo-Marxism, ta, 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 Karl Marx, ta, ta, ta. and he's like, and then he's the one that brought up, um, he says, what this means is someone can say a Latino male is oppressed, but not as much as a Latina female. And they're both beaten out by a Latina lesbian because now she's gay right. and she's Latina and she's a female. So she wins. So she deserves to go at the front and she's going to lead the fucking marcha. <laughs> That's what was real talk. That's why at a lot of these BLM, Antifa type things, well, I would say BLM more. Let's, let's forget Antifa for this. But at a lot of the BLM rallies, nine times out of ten, it's going to be a female lesbian leading the chant, leading the march, and with the, with the bullhorn. Because in that intersectional world, if you already um, subscribe to that, she's the queen bee. Mm. It don't get more oppressed than that. So she's the one that's going to be like, lead the way because it's like she has a uh, moral high ground. You're Gen X, by the way. Okay. Gen X. Yeah. yeah. Gen Z would be like you're not, 24 and below. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm, you know, the trill. That's when the, that's when the trill people was um, I, brought up. Although, because you're 41 this year, it says millennial is 25 to 40 right now. That's why I called you an elder. Oh, millennial. yeah. Yeah. Oh, 40 year old millennials? Yeah. I missed it by like a year and a half. So 81 to 96. Aren't you? 79. You're 79? 1979, oh, baby. Oh, okay. All right, baby. I'm from the 70s, baby. What do you do, baby? Yeah, do you- I'm from 89 like I'm that from the 80s. Yeah, you're on the cusp. You're a 90s, baby. Speaking real quick, uh, to continue on this, um, whatever the fuck we want to talk about, sexuality, whatever it is, like the oppressed, I, th- I saw a funny meme that said, uh, it was something like, wow, the irony of people that are, you know, there's a hundred genders kind of oh they're on that side and they and they they wave around the lgbt flags where meanwhile the b in it means bi that there's only two you know two genders uh, bisexual would mean uh, that there's yeah. only two right yeah that you only like w- one or the other yeah the two okay yeah that's fine lgb meaning T-Q. bi q and then you got Trevor Noah talking about, with all that we're learning about gender, is it irresponsible to do gender reveal part? Shut your bitch ass up, Trevor Noah. Hey, he Take actually, your ass back to South Africa, bro. I haven't seen a clip of his that I, I was like, oh, that makes sense until uh, yesterday. He, he actually went on a mask rant. Did you see it? No. That made mean? some sense. What? Trevor Noah? Right? <laughs> I'm like, is he looking to get fired or, who, or what happened? No, nah, he don't write his shit. No way. No way. So... What do they say? Those people at that level. He, he ain't wrote his shit since he was in Johannesburg. <laughs> people on that level have their opinions assigned to them. You know oh no, no, everybody. Yeah. We we all have our opinions assigned to us. Um, I got I got to look it up just so you can get your give me your feedback on it. Yeah, no, I would love to. Um, because I used to like Trevor Noah, man. Um, I have his audio book and everything. Um, I thought he had a cool story. But uh, and I and when he got the job at to what is it the Daily or whatever uh, Daily Show yeah yeah I was like okay well that's an interesting choice that's cool whatever um but now all the mainstream media they they're all like with everything we're learning about gender isn't it irresponsible to have gender reveal parties yeah it's funny when like somebody annoys you now you you think their accents annoy. i used to think his accent was pretty like oh, i like that accent I'm like oh south africa yeah, we should go cool. to south africa yeah now it's like go fuck yourself yeah all right sorry guys ads and then i'll pull it over for jingle blame Pinche lefty larry oh lefty larry got to apply for the cia has been with exactly that's what i was thinking over a year now and it's changed everything about our lives right we've lost jobs we spent all day on Zoom. We've forgotten how to interact with other people. I mean, I don't even remember how to shake hands anymore. Like, do I grab the other person's hand or do I just shake mine in front of their face? This is it, right? This, this is no, no? So for a long time, we've been sitting in our homes and washing our face masks, waiting for the day when things would start to get back to normal. But my friends, it looks like that day may finally be here. Tonight, the CDC's About Face changes daily life for all Americans, especially those fully vaccinated, releasing this new chart, updating guidelines on face masks outdoors. The agency... 
agency now says whether you're vaccinated or not, it's safe to walk down the street, go for a run or a bike ride without a face covering. You also won't need one to attend a small outdoor gathering like a barbecue if everyone else is vaccinated. For those who are fully vaccinated, the new outdoor guidelines extend further. The CDC also saying it's safe to gather outside in a small group whether others are vaccinated or not. The bottom line is clear. If you're vaccinated, you can do more things. So for those who haven't... Fuck you, Joe Biden. So happy. I'm so happy. You know why? Because now we won't have to give each other dirty looks when we're walking past each other on the street. We'll eat outdoors now without a mask on. I got to find the part. As it's a six-minute clip. As opposed to before when you had to wear a mask while you were eating. That was such a disaster. But man, I lost a ton of weight. Whew. I don't know why he got that metal is in a viral rant. Okay, now look, people. I know science is difficult, and this is a novel virus and all of that, but who's running messaging at the CDC, huh? First they said, masks make us less safe. Oh, don't wear a mask. Then they said, masks make us more safe. And now, according to this new chart, masks can make you not safe again? In fact, this whole chart is trash. Yeah, I said it. I mean, for starters, this guy is in the least safe category, but he's wearing a mask. If it's not safe, even with a mask on, then don't have a guy there. Just have an X or something that signifies danger, like a skull and crossbones or a picture of R. Kelly. And the whole thing is too complicated. I have to sit here trying to interpret reds and yellows and greens. There's outdoor, indoor, outdoor, indoor, partial, indoor, outdoor with the people who might be vaccinated, partially vaccinated. This is unreadable. You don't see the Forest Service putting out flow charts like no fires, unless the fires are in stone pits. Or you come from a long line of firefighters. Or you watch the weather and you know a rainstorm is coming in a few minutes. No, they say no fires or this bear is gonna eat your family. Who designed this chart? The same people who designed those parking signs in LA? And the really frustrating thing about this chart is that they've spent months, they've spent five months telling us to get vaccinated. Oh, get vaccinated, and this will all be over. Get vaccinated! And I was like, great, I'll get all the four vaccines if it means I'll get my life back. But now, now they're putting out a chart and it says even if you get vaccinated, you can only do two more things without a mask on? Two? Guys, what the hell? The shit you're saying to people is incoherent. You're telling us these new vaccines are 95% effective and will stop coronavirus, but... We still can't do anything without a mask on anyway, which is it? Is this one of the most effective vaccines in the history of the world or does it not work? It's not clear messaging, especially if you're desperately trying to convince people to get the vaccine. Can you imagine if every time- Yeah, and that's kind of the gist of it. <clears throat> that is the most, that, that makes, that's the most sense he's made in 18 plus months. Uh, he's going to trigger a lot of people on the left. A lot yeah. of people on the left are going to be like, um, I would love to see those comments. What, what are the comments looking like on that Let's thing? swipe. Why hasn't this video been removed for going against CDC guidelines? <laughs> oh, right. like, uh, that's actually a good question, though, right? Like many of uh, DeSanti's... Oh, okay, mm -hmm. so he's on... Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's basically saying, like, it's hypocritical. Very. Did Trevor know just say how many of us have been getting yelled at or saying for a year? He basically, yeah. Did Trevor know just say, well, many of us have been getting yelled at for saying for a year. Someone said, surprisingly, I agree with Trevor here. However, I am reporting this video to see if YouTube will apply their, quote, rules equally for everyone. I'm not going to hold my breath. Yeah. Someone said, Trevor Noah is late to the party about this. He's literally bringing up things from months ago that people got demonetized for saying because they went against the ever-changing opinions of the science authorities. Yeah, scientists are the real gangsters. They the, they the ones really calling shots right now. They you, got all the fucking power. You're challenging the CDC still waiting for YouTube to censor you. So it seems like people are like, they've been saying this shit and they've been saying that you're wrong. And uh, yet his video, what did this get? 871,000 views? Well, well, I'll put it to you like this. He was critiquing the CDC's messaging. Mm -hmm. Some will critique the CDC, like, and their, um, their legitimacy, mm -hmm. uh, their integrity, um, the level of corruption. You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, this whole debate about did the virus come from 
you know, a laugh. Oh, did you hear that Josh Rogan episode on Rogan? I think I'm almost done with it. And um, yeah, that was an excellent breakdown. And there's been um, like that other, uh, the Steve Bannon show, it's called War Room Pandemic. Mm-hmm. They've been saying that. They've been, they were like, bro, you got the NIH, National Institute of Health. You got this government funding. You got um, Fauci. They call, dude, on that War Room Pandemic, Steve Bannon and them, they call Fauci the father of the virus. They basically say he's the one that approved this uh, gain of gain of function Mm -hmm. research, which is where they're trying to predict the next pandemic, see how viruses could be used as like a bioweapon and uh, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, uh, man, it's uh, and Alex Jones, for better, for worse, has been saying that forever, too. And then you got people that I'm that I'm cool with that are obviously consuming too much CNN um if you say that around them they'll be like <laughs> chingo it came from bat soup it's from a there's literally a wet market in wuhan but if you look into it they still ain't found like a pangolin or whatever type of animal that supposedly even had the virus like something about it something just ain't adding up and i guess you could look at it like regardless of where it came from we still got to figure out how we're going to deal with it however Many would argue that, um, you know, a certain country who didn't really give us a heads up and they were trying to, you know, buy up all the PPP and uh, let shut down like movement within their country, but had people leaving, flying out to Milan, flying out to New York, flying out to L.A., just spreading it around. Um yeah, we're getting into murky waters because I know this is on YouTube. Yeah. And some people going to think I got the tamal foil on my head right now. You're right. We need to save a lot of the stuff, which we got to maybe two of 20 things on that list uh, for the Patreon exclusive on Friday. For sure. Which we should mention, if you want to sign up for an audiobook and learn about the shit that we're talking about, audibletrial.com forward slash red pill tamales for a free book and a 30 day trial of uh, Audible. That's right. We partnered up with Audible. And if you don't have time to uh, sit there and, and read books, you can... Uh, you know, when you're not listening to RPT, mm-hmm. you could be soaking up game and uh, listening to uh, an audiobook. Yeah, and let us know if you saw the um, Swamp documentary. Do y'all finish it? I believe so. Okay. There might be a little piece at the end we need to go back and finish. Yeah, and then uh, give us your feedback on it and see what you learned from it. Um, I went ahead and got, the first book I got was uh, Lawrence Lessig, so the the Harvard law professor that's in there, or historian or whatever that he's in there with the glasses, his book's called Republic Lost. And mm. that's what I'm listening to right now. How, how is the reader like the voice? It's him. It's good. I it's like his good. Voice. Yeah. Okay. Republic Lost. Yeah. It's very interesting. It's a very long book. It's ten hours worth. So you get your. You definitely get your free book worth when you get a book that dense. That's what's up. Yeah. So send yeah. us out, man, on a positive note. So yeah, if you guys have any information about what's going on in Colombia, um, also don't forget. Um, I believe it was CNN put out some fake news, right? What a surprise. They said that the Biden administration has a good hold on the border now and that they've decreased by 84% the amount of children going into these uh, centers and, and camps or whatever they call them, right? However, uh, Roy Villarreal, 32-year Border Patrol experience, um, he put out the debunk on it. He said, this is not true. What they're doing is they're funneling out the kids into private uh camps if you will so it's still the flow hasn't stopped there's still a crisis don't get distracted they're playing a shell game to claim a win they're they're shuffling the kids out of those particular camps moving them into privatized still same amount of camps i mean same amount of kids but they're trying to make it seem like a win anyway we bring i say that to say this this is the rpt this red pill tamales we are trying to get at the truth so that we could be more informed because now more than ever, being informed is important for your life. So please spread the word about the RPT, Red Pill Tamales. Thank you for joining the Tamale Intelligence Agency. Tell a friend and join us. Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. Peace.